Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. As North Carolinians, we're all very, very proud of North Carolina State University, and we're exceptionally pleased that uh, the 14th Chancellor of the, the institution could come over from Raleigh and sit down for a visit. Randy Woodson's been on the job one year. He's had his year in a day, so we're going to talk about his experiences and his appreciation of the state and what he's now the administrator for all of us as its head. We'll join him in just a few seconds. Sponsored in part by Wachovia, a Wells Fargo company, helping North Carolina people realize their financial goals since 1879 and through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNC TV. Randy, I, I welcome you. I, I've enjoyed our visits together up to now, and we're going to have many more as the years go by. But uh, You've had a long career in academic administration at Purdue and uh, your own scholarly work. You've, you've been there a year. What's your impression of the students and the faculty at NC State? Uh, Mr. Friday, I, I came to NC State knowing that we had outstanding faculty and students. Uh, and I, the last year has confirmed <laughs> what I knew to be true. Mm -hmm. And the, the faculty are world class mm -hmm. and they have a commitment to not only outstanding scholarship, but to doing things to improve the world, and particularly North Carolina. There's a real focus on the economy of the state and a commitment to the people of North Carolina. But to be honest with you, a real surprise for me has been the quality of our students. Uh, we've got a group of students at NC State that are service-minded. They're very career-focused, as yeah. you would expect at a university like ours. but their willingness to give back to the community has been uh, a real surprise to me and, and frankly something that I'm very, very proud of. The little segment of that that I have kept up with, uh, the Park Scholars, right. and I met with that group recently and I, I must say that's an incredible bunch of talented people. It is. It's uh, The Park Scholarship is our, is our premier scholarship. It's mm -hmm. a group of students from around the country mostly North Carolina, but uh, from all over. And they're very talented uh, and they're very creative. Mm -hmm. It's the Park Scholars that came up with the Krispy Kreme Challenge, <laughs> which is our annual race that generates over, raised over $100,000 for the mm -hmm. UNC Children's Hospital. Wonderful. So uh, they're outstanding students and we're very proud of them. Well, now you've had this year to sort of get the feel of the place. Uh, pretty dynamic institution, isn't it? It is, and I've, uh, as you know, I've spent a lot of time getting out in the state and mm -hmm. have seen the impact of uh, NC State all over North Carolina. And of course, we're in every county because of yeah. county extension, uh, but it, it's a university that truly is the People's University of North Carolina. And uh, it, it's uh, a pleasure, in fact, I was just in Winston-Salem this past uh, Monday evening for a reception, and uh, you see the impact of NC State everywhere. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know of a place that has many, so many exciting things going on, and uh, you encouraged me recently, so I drove out to look at that new library. Yes. Now, I must say, that that building itself is, is a dynamic expression, but... Uh, it is. What all went into that, Randy? Well, when we envisioned an iconic library for Centennial Campus. We wanted a structure that, that really talked about the innovative nature of Centennial Campus. As you know, Centennial Campus is one of the most innovative university campuses in America because of its unusual partnership with the private sector where our academic buildings sit side by side with Red Hat software or Mead uh, West Vaco or the U.S. Department of Agriculture. So we wanted a library that would really say, uh, be an icon for Centennial Campus and a testament to the incredible leadership of Governor Jim Hunt. And I dare say that we're building one of the most impressive uh, structures that anyone would ever experience. It's a 
230,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. It's an incredible combination of technology and learning space. It will be a place where our faculty can test drive new technology for the classroom. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll provide critically needed study space for the 34,000 students that occupy our campus. Uh, but more importantly, and, and maybe more interestingly, it really is an iconic piece of architecture. It, uh, it, it really takes your breath away. It does. When you stand back over here and take a look, main, main side. Well, what about that marvelous uh, expansion in the veterinary science program? That's one of the great vet schools of the country. And it, it is. In fact, our vet school, as you probably know, was just ranked by U.S. News and World Report as the third uh, best veterinary college in the, in the country. Mm -hmm. And we have just dedicated mm -hmm. the new Randall Terry uh, Hospital for Small Companion Animals, which is without a doubt uh, one of the most impressive uh, veterinary hospitals you'll ever see. Mm -hmm. It's a very large facility that supports everything from surgery uh, to oncology and cancer treatment. We have one of the few linear accelerators for radiation therapy for pets with cancer. Uh, and it will, as you might imagine, create a, a great clinical space for our students to learn from some of the best faculty in the world. So I'm very proud right. of it. Well, you certainly should be, but you know, most of us never really conceive of how large that industry is. It's huge. It, it is a very large industry. And yeah. in fact, uh, it's also a medical science field yeah. that provides critical data and knowledge to human medicine. Right. There are a lot of things that we do in discovery related to the health of our animals, both food animal and companion animals, that translates directly to the treatment of humans. Uh, we, we've recently uh, implanted a prosthetic leg on a dog that had an amputated leg, and it's a new technology that human medicine is in is benefiting from at this point. So it's amazing science. When I was taking a tour over there some time ago, uh, somebody told me that uh, almost under the cover of darkness they'd bring these very valuable race horses in right. there for treatment or surgery or whatever and send them back home. But that's, that's a, quite a tribute to the faculty to say the least. Well, in fact, uh, after the tornadoes that devastated North Carolina in Sanford uh, in particular, uh, we had a group of 12 uh, thoroughbreds that were brought into the hospital for treatment because of injuries they had sustained from the tornado. Uh, and, uh, and our staff responded brilliantly to, the, to that crisis. And uh, I'm, I'm, sa I'm glad to say that many of the horses are doing well now, but uh, there were casualties from that. Mm -hmm. As you have learned in detail about the campus. Uh, where is the greatest pressure for enrollment now? Where, where is it coming from as North Carolina changes? Well, uh, let me start by saying that NC State has the largest applicant pool from the state of North Carolina today. Mm -hmm. uh, this year we received 20,000 applications really? uh, for 4,400 freshman spots. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of pressure. Yeah. Uh, enrollment growth is a, is a serious issue mm -hmm. because the state is growing and we hope the state will continue to improve in graduation rates and mm -hmm. college going rate. So we know that there's going to be increased pressure. Mm -hmm. I'd say that right now the, the, the most intense pressure is in our College of Engineering mm -hmm. where admission is uh, it's an outstanding college. It's the fourth largest engineering college in America. And so there's tremendous pressure there. And there's also tremendous pressure in our pool college of management mm -hmm. um, because of the strength in our entrepreneurs program and uh, the accounting program. So we've got a lot of challenges in terms of meeting uh, those critical needs for the state. Does this mean then that you pay a lot of attention to the relationship with the schools? Uh, oh, absolutely. You, have, you, you, you do it directly. We do, and we're working hard to ensure, as you know, a lot of students yeah. come to a university not fully aware of, of okay. their interest. And we want to make it easy for yeah. them to navigate the university mm -hmm. and move between colleges uh, as they consider new career options. And that's one, something we're working hard on 
because as you might imagine, a technical university like ours, uh, engineering doesn't translate readily to uh, English. <laughs> and, uh, and so it's not unusual for students to struggle to move within NC State, and it's something we're trying to improve. Well, one of the things that always impressed me, too, was the way you extended the institution into the life of the state in so many dimensions. Uh, one of those, you've been uh, in, uh, a colleague with uh, Hugh Shelton, General yeah. Shelton. What, what about his leadership institute? How's it doing? Well, General Shelton is, is an icon in terms of the leadership he's provided to this country, mm -hmm. and we're so proud he's a NC State alum. And he's brought his passion for leadership to our great university and, and established a center to help students become more effective leaders and frankly to foster leadership uh, of highest ethics in the business community. So we have a leadership forum that bears his name once a year, bringing together uh, the people from all industries. Uh, we get out into the community and help young people develop leadership skills and all under uh, the Shelton Leadership Institute. Last time I had him here, he, he, he was speaking with such great pride about uh, the young people that he saw. And yeah. Has he not spun off to other, even talking about Alaska? He is. In fact, uh, we're taking his program with his leadership and initiative to other universities in North Carolina and frankly around the country. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the centerpiece for his passion is to build ethical leaders for an increasingly complex world. And uh, starting at the very youngest age, we have uh, leadership camps for students across North Carolina. And uh, it's great to be able to celebrate his legacy with that institute. Now you've been an, an observer of administrative structure and worked in all kinds of structures. I have. You've had a chance to look at what we did in 1970. Now, I'm not asking f because of my personal involvement. I'm right. not asking for complimentary, but, but what I'm really asking you is, what's the difference you see and right. has, has it in your view really, is it really working? Well, the fundamental difference is that all public higher education in the state of North Carolina is connected through one system. There's not a, another state in the country that has brought together all higher education under one umbrella the way North Carolina has. What has it done? It's created a system that remains accessible to the people of North Carolina. Every student in this state can find an educational home that is appropriate for their background and experience and their preparation. Uh, but I think the main thing that it's done is it's continued to focus the people of North Carolina on the critical role higher education plays in the state. Mm -hmm. We uh, lead the country in terms of the percentage of our high school graduates that remain in North Carolina for college. Mm -hmm. I fundamentally do not believe that that would have occurred without us being together as a single system. That's right. Uh, so it's part of the reason I'm here because I knew it to be one of the strongest, in fact, in the country. And I see evidence of it now, having been here for over a year. There are, I think now, 25 states that have grappled with this problem uh, one way or another. Not as, not as structurally organized as North right. Carolina did, but uh, uh, looking to the future, isn't something like that going to be necessary because of the volume we're trying to deal with? We haven't solved the problem of how to give educational opportunity to everybody yet. It, it is, uh, and also increasingly important will be our partnership with the community college yeah. system. Uh, again, mm -hmm. because of the volume and because of the need for us to help students become prepared mm -hmm. for the kind of educational environment that we provide at NC State, mm -hmm we're going to have to continue to work with community colleges. But uh, the system also uh, is a great way for us to remain, as I said earlier, accessible uh, to the population of the state. And as you know, many of our campuses are, have tremendous growth at this point. Uh, they certainly have. What surprised you the most, if anything, as you've wandered around North Carolina? What, 
What about the state and its people? Well, it, Susan and I, my wife and I, have been warmly uh, welcomed here, and it's uh, frankly, it's been fun to come back to the South after having grown up in Arkansas, and, mm -hmm. and it, it's been a while since I've mm -hmm. lived in this kind of environment. And so we've, we've been pleasantly surprised by how warmly we've been embraced and welcomed. Uh, we have been surprised by um, the passion people have for our, our university, uh, in particular athletics. <laughs> uh, so that's been a, a, mm -hmm. a surprise. Uh, all pleasant surprises. Um, and obviously the economy has been a bit of a surprise, mm -hmm. but that's been a surprise to everyone across the country. I wanted to ask you that. You, you have a vantage point <clears throat> that few men have. Uh, what about the acceptance of higher education in America today? You, I just saw a New York Times piece. Why do you go to college anyway? That kind of talk. And uh, it just seems to me that uh, there's not a real appreciation of the extent and value of what goes on. Well, I think uh, <coughs> I, I'm concerned, uh, candidly, that higher education, as much as higher education was embraced after the world, Second World War mm -hmm. as an economic engine for the country, and the GI Bill, Bill brought yeah. all these uh, men mostly, uh, but also women, into mm -hmm. our system because we knew the transformative power mm -hmm. of higher education. And if we're gonna compete in this global marketplace, we can't lose sight of that. Uh, it, it, and so we've got to continue to remind the citizens of not only North Carolina, but the country of what the greatest system of higher education in the world means to this country and what it's meant to our tremendous success in the last 50 years yeah. and how it could be our detriment in the next 50 years if we lose sight of it. The faculty is always the core. All of us say that but it's yeah. really true. It is. How hard is it now to keep and how hard is it to compete? Uh, it's the biggest challenge we face right now. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, that is, uh, w it's not hard to recruit talented faculty to NC State. It's a great university, uh, increasingly uh, sophisticated facilities, and it's in one of the most dynamic regions of the country in the Triangle. Uh, and it also is in an outstanding state. Mm -hmm. It's not hard to convince people to come to North Carolina and to NC State, but it's hard to keep them because uh, universities around the country recognize talent. Uh, we had, as you know, we have members elected to the National Academy of Science almost every year, and I can guarantee you when that occurs, uh, there are others across the country that will try to come in and bring their talent somewhere it else. It puts a label on him. Puts a label. <laughs> uh, and, and frankly, right now, the biggest challenge is we're in an environment where we're entering our fourth year without salary increases. The current proposals from uh, the legislature suggest that we'll have two more years in that category. So uh, other universities are coming calling and we're working mm -hmm. hard to retain our talent. Have you as you've gone about and looked and felt the place. Uh, even with all of that, though, it strikes me when I'm over there that visiting that uh, there's a sense of momentum about that place. It's so different. Well, there is. We're, uh, we've launched a new strategic plan. Mm -hmm. uh, I think any time you bring in new leadership, there's a level of apprehension and excitement. And I'd like to think right now the campus is in a very exciting uh, phase of our uh, of our growth. Uh, we're all very apprehensive about the, the funding situation, mm -hmm. but that's tempered by incredible enthusiasm for uh, what NC State means to the state of North Carolina and frankly what it means to the world. When you look at the grand challenges our society face, whether it's feeding a growing population, providing sustainable energy to the world, uh, are, are the growing issue of health care. You know, NC State has the ability to bring together the expertise uh, to educate a population for the challenges and frankly to do the research. So uh, it's a very uh, exciting time for our university. 
I want to I want you to touch on the business of internationalization of the yeah. institution a little bit more. I last time I checked, I think, as, and I did this as an alumnus, really. Uh, we had two f people who've been associated with that faculty who were in on the Nobel Award. Right. Now that isn't generally known in North Carolina, but that's in, in the academic world you don't yeah. do it any better than that. But uh, what about you, you mentioned Prague to me earlier? Uh, what about our outside involvement? Well, uh, as as I'm sure you know, we've had a long history of a very international student body. Mm -hmm. Uh, any university that's as technically rich as, as NC State is, uh, you're going to have students from all over the world that want to benefit from our College of Textiles, mm -hmm. our College of Agriculture, Engineering, the kind of things that we do that are of interest around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have a very international faculty. We have launched an international institute in Prague, mm -hmm. uh, which is for our College of Design to study European architecture to help our architects mm -hmm. and our designers understand the context of, of design in mm -hmm. Europe. Uh, and we have partnerships with major universities in China, uh, Tsinghua University in Beijing, uh, Seoul National University in Korea. And these just help us to keep our work relevant to the world mm -hmm. and to be one of the most attractive universities to students from around the world. How relevant then is that because every major corporation of the is called American, right. some of them now do more business overseas than home. This requires that you train students in some sense of an international context, doesn't it? Absolutely. Our, our goal is to get the majority of our graduates mm -hmm. to have had an international experience before they leave NC State. Mm -hmm. Because they're very likely to work for a company uh, that's a multinational company. Uh, you know Jim Owens, yeah. who's uh, on our board of trustees, the CEO of Caterpillar. Uh, he, th that kind of company doesn't hire people if they don't understand the context of working around the world. That's right. Uh, and we want our student body to be uh, aware of and responsive to the global environment. You've certainly been a part of everything that's happened out here at the Research Triangle, too, and that. The leadership out there tells me that they're going through a redefinition now. Yeah. Uh, is that a part of keeping up with what's going on? It, it very much is. Uh, the, the park has been, an, as you know, an incredible asset mm -hmm. for the region. And I think that it's natural that the triangle would start to ask questions about what's the next phase in its mm -hmm. development. Mm -hmm. And how can we develop the amenities that the private sector looks to as they relocate their companies or start a company. Mm -hmm. uh, and so Research Triangle Park is a global brand and the foundation that oversees it, which I'm a member of, uh, that mm -hmm. board is working hard to make sure it remains a global brand. Well, it's certainly been a remarkable success story. It has. You're comfortable now in North Carolina, back uh, home in this part of the world? Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, and more importantly, uh, my wife is comfortable. Well, that's you know important. how important oh, that yes, is. Oh, yes, sir, but uh, we, We're very happy. You've certainly been on the circuit, so to speak. Uh, you, you feel good about what you get in terms of response as you journey around the state? I, I do. The, and as you know, we're also journeying around the country. Yeah. We've, uh, we've got graduates all over the, uh, the U.S., and we're taking this show on the road sure. to keep people connected. Uh, I was in Washington last week. We had over 200 people for a reception in our nation's capital. Uh, and people are genuinely excited about NC State and thrilled that we're working hard to keep them connected. Uh, and that's true in North Carolina and it's true in Washington and it's true in California where we've had events in San Francisco and San Jose. Well, so, it, certainly, it certainly energized you. Anybody knows you at all knows you, you're responding to it. And, but uh, still getting that exercise and a good night's sleep. <laughs> oh, Mr. Friday, uh, you've hit the sore point. Uh, I'm not getting enough exercise. Yeah. My wife tells me that every day. Yeah. But I've got to, I've got to do better. Well, you know, you you mentioned you're from Fordyce, Arkansas. Yes. Uh, one of your predecessors, John Caldwell, came here from the presidency of the University of Arkansas and then 
Ferris Womack was, was an officer here at Chapel Hill, was from Arkansas. That state's had a lot of influence here. <laughs> well, uh, <coughs> you know, Ferris Womack yeah. is someone I know very well yeah. from, he grew up right outside of uh, yeah. my hometown. And uh, the people that I meet that tell me that uh, I remind them of John Caldwell because of the <laughs> Arkansas connection, they often come back and say, I hope you're half as good as he was. <laughs> and well, he was a great, great chancellor for NC State. About, we don't worry about what you <laughs> do, but thank you for coming over and sitting down with me, Randy. It's a joy to see you anytime and always. It's an honor to and be with you. And I value being your colleague and friends. I hope you've enjoyed this chance to get acquainted with one of North Carolina's new and very vigorous and very highly competent leaders. You'll see more of him as the weeks and months and years go by. Till next week then, good night. Sponsored in part by Wachovia, a Wells Fargo company, helping North Carolina people realize their financial goals since 1879. And through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNC-TV.